Hello, in this video, we're going to be talking about two of my favorite things, baking and yeast. So turns out if you've ever baked before, you know that bread can rise. You mix some dough with some water, you throw in the yeast, the yeast in there starts to respire. You add a little bit of energy to speed up the, the process and then the dough starts to rise because there's carbon dioxide being given off. There's also ethanol being given off as well too, but the ethanol evaporates away. So we use this process of anaerobic respiration with yeast to help us make the dough. And that's basically it pretty straightforward. You can also uh, use this process to create alcoholic beverages. I did not say that that was one of my favorite pastimes. I said yeast and baking, just drawing attention to that. This airlock here allows the carbon dioxide that's produced to escape, but it doesn't allow any extra oxygen to get in. And if no oxygen can come in, then this is a anaerobic process. So carbon dioxide is one of the byproducts, but you also get ethanol and ethanol is the stuff the active ingredient inside alcoholic drinks um, i don't know anything about that i hope you don't you are too young so don't even think about it the yeast is cultured in liquid so it anaerobically respires uh, the ethanol concentration can go up can rise to 15 percent by volume before it becomes lethal and then you have to stop fermentation but i know that there are certain things out there that are higher than 15 percent those are produced in you know a variety of different ways people try to use different sources for the yeast, wild yeast, uh, very safe yeast, and then they add extra things in there to change the flavors of certain types of alcoholic beverages as well too. You can also use this for making fuel. That's probably a better use of this than for consumption. Using yeast in baking and brewing is an example of how we can use this process of anaerobic respiration to help make yummy bread.